in, we're, we're trying to make connections here between uh, some of Norma's work and hip hop. And for me, already with George Jefferson on the brain, I think about uh, George as that sort of pre-recorded hip hop figure who has the swagger, the wit, the entrepreneurialism, and this sort of rejection of the white gaze that then sort of becomes what hip hop is all about. Um, talk a little bit about George Jefferson as a sort of figure leading into hip hop. Yeah, well I mean, George Jefferson obviously represented success too. Yeah. Um, like he was one of the, the first, well the first black characters I seen that, that really was like living well, yeah. like that was wealthy and would talk to white people the way he did. It's just like some of those things that you just wouldn't expect. Okay, where does that relate to hip hop? Well, obviously hip hop was about like coming out of the inner city and maybe not having much and turning that into something. And the whole moving on up thing was like, look, not only would I look at moving on up as literal, but it was like figuratively moving on up. Like yeah. we moving on up like to a higher place. And that's what, that's the basis of hip hop really. Yeah. Along with that, Obviously, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Jeffersons was like so funny and George as a character, just the things that he expressed, it, it just kind of, it. I think all of the shows had an influence on hip hop in many ways because these characters were real to us. Like when we would go to, go to school the next day, we talking about what happened on the show. Yep. And that influenced so much of the way we grew up, how we lived. And eventually it came out in the music and the culture and what, and what we thought. So George Jefferson, I can't say he was an MC, but he, you know, he wasn't a rapper, but he, but he had the persona of some of the qualities that you see in some artists, which is the success and the swag and, and the like, yo, I'm not holding my tongue for nobody. For nobody. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, that was shocking. That character, George Jefferson, was shocking to a lot of America, black and white. Talk about what you were going for when you first created him. Well, when the, when, uh, when the Jeffersons moved in, I was, Esther o had scored so well on Maud, she earned her own show, and we had brought John Amos on Maud so that the network could see there was a couple, and, uh, and they ordered a pilot. Uh, when we were making the, uh, the pilot, uh, no, no, we had the order, and I didn't have a George Jefferson, so we invented an uncle, and it was a really fine actor. I wish I could remember his name now. He, from uh, from uh, uh, San Francisco, who came down and played for many weeks the the male voice in that house, because uh, and I forget what the character's name, but he, and then he appeared a few times, but he was the male authority in that house because I hadn't found George Jefferson. And then, uh, to, at the suggestion of uh, uh, my casting lady, uh, whose name I'm fighting for, Marion Doherty, uh, great woman. And uh, I remember I had seen uh, uh, Sherman Hemsley in a show called Pearly. And, and he was ideal. The, and what made him ideal for me was he was short, shorter than, uh, than and, I, and I just felt a, a shorter, bombastic character would be better blasting <laughs> Carol. Uh, and I knew I had it with, uh, with Sherman. So Sherman came out and played the role. 